Okay, this is a, a demonstration on how to glaze field tiles. This is a, my homemade white glaze. Uh, my, uh, this glaze has uh, been tried and tested over about 15 years. I created it from uh, using my own ingredients, mixing it together. Uh, it works well with my clay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is a tool that I made out of a coat hanger. Um, it lasts forever. I use it for hand dipping my tiles. Um, this is how I hand dip tiles. Um, this is a field tile I made. They've been waxed. Waxed halfway up the side. This is how I hand dip, hand make my field tiles. Dunk it in the glaze and I leave it for about three seconds. Now this is uh, not, this isn't necessarily true with all glazes. You have to kind of experiment and figure out how your glazes work on your tiles. Um, then I turn it. I'm turning it because when I dip the glaze, the glaze all runs off in one direction. By turning it, then it will run off in another direction. And it'll just, it's a, it's a something that it'll, it'll give more consistency on the edges when the glaze dries. Um, there can also be some, uh, depending on the glaze, there can be some interesting effects that, that are, a little, are a little different if you do it this way, instead of just dipping it the same way both times. So I wait, wait until the sheen is gone from the wetness, it's drying. And then I dip it again. I don't dip it as long this time. I just kind of dip it in maybe for one or two seconds. Let it drip for a minute. Be very careful to keep the edges blunt, um, pure. Okay. Here's another one. This one I'll just do at full speed. Okay, you notice there's a little chunk of something on there. <clears throat> Um, you know, I just mixed this glaze as a brand new bucket, um, and I and I uh, mixed it through a strainer, uh, a sieve. So what that is is just a little bit of a, of a, a chunky residue that that's left from uh, probably something that was collected on the sieve on the bottom of the sieve, and the materials were falling through. Uh, it looks like it could be a little bit of uh, talc, which will do that occasionally. There's talc in here, so. Um, I'm not worried about that, but that's something that comes with doing a lot of these. Um, if you have big chunks or chunks, you don't want big chunks. But when you're experienced at doing this, you'll have a better idea of what um, let it drip a little bit. So we wax, like I said, I was saying, we, we, we wax the edges. So the edges, you can't really see it there, you can kind of see, but the edges <clears throat> won't have any glaze on it. So if we weren't, if we, if we would, if I went without waxing the edges, I would have a heck of a struggle um, doing the uh, cleaning process with the sponge. So again, just wait two or three seconds. Again, some, some small, those will melt out, I'm pretty sure. Um, this is a glaze that's very consistent, and it uh, it's just very consistent. I haven't had any problems with it, so um, again, this is a brand new bucket. Wait till the sheen is gone. You can see that sheen on there. You can see it's kind of drying on that side, but it's more shiny over there. That's because... This was the side that was lower before, so there was more glaze there. That's why another reason why I'm turning it. Now remember, each glaze is something you have to you have to know how the glaze is going to work on the tile on the clay. So it's something that I know very well, having glazed hundreds and thousands of tiles. You don't have to turn it one way, you can turn it 180 degrees, you don't have to turn it 90 degrees. 
Again, I don't have to do that. I do that because I know it'll just give a more consistent coat that I that I personally like. So the customer just wants a tile that's going to have a nice, consistent coat on it. Um, that looks like what it is that you showed them it was going to be, somewhat close to that. Now every customer is going to be a little different. Um, so. So there, that's a little lesson on how we glaze field tiles.